All right, happy Saturday to me. I don't know what day you're watching this, but I'm gonna screw Waba. I'm gonna shoot this at 60 frames per second just for fun today. I'll go back to the old school live look. Maybe I'll just keep doing that on, uh, on Wash and Talks. Uh, we're gonna wash the E36 because it's the only dirty car I have. The 997RS is clean, the M3 is clean, the Brewster is getting polished this week. Uh, so the Brewster's clean, but scratched up. Uh, so we're gonna polish that. But we're gonna play with some new stuff here today. I plan to do this more often as I've gotten my sort of life together in order. Uh, we're gonna organizing. I'll talk about the wash bay that we staked out. Maybe I'll carry the camera over there and show you that. Uh, what else do we have? I've got a bunch of crap all over the counter here. Um, I'm going to try some different stuff today. Um, I'll talk about that as we work through this. But I gotta re up my brake buster here. Waiting on countertop and backsplash should be here shortly. Um, we've given the go ahead for the funnel. Uh, I don't think we'll make it because I've seen some of the secret prototypes of what's coming on the new, uh, the new foam cannon. So there's a new MTM foam cannon that could, may or may not be on the horizon, which would be cool. So I'm using the old funnel, which works. So when I do brake buster in here, I just do it straight up. So no dilution. So we're gonna brake buster the wheels. I'm gonna try some Vonix tire cleaner. Uh, Tiago from Vonix USA came up to visit me. He's been after me for months. And so I finally paid attention and he came and uh, talked about some products that he really likes that they make. So we'll test those out. Uh, the other thing we're gonna do here today is we're gonna do a foaming wash first. So I'm gonna do some, uh, some touchless. I think I like touchless better than auto foam. Uh, touchless seems a bit more, um, I guess, realistic. It seems less, um, seems less APC to me and more, uh, a little softer. But the concept here, which I'm eating my words, maybe eating my words, not sure yet, is that you sort of use the detergent to surface clean the car first. Uh, hopefully it doesn't attack the coating. Uh, and then, um, then you get a lot of the dirt off the car before you actually wash it. The problem with this is is in order to do this, so let me explain how I came up with this formula. So I've got two Krenzlas, so running them in parallel. So these two guys here are run in parallel, right? And so I have the option to run them both, run one, run, you know, run none, I guess. Um, but to run both pressure washers is not realistic uh, when you're gonna do any kind of deionization with the CR Spotless. I'm working on a, on a setup that will flow up to, you know, say six gallons a minute efficiently. But I can't, I can't, if, if I try to run the two foam cannons at 4.2 gallons a minute through a one and a half orifice, so, or 1.5 orifice nozzle on the foam cannon, um, the, in order to get a panel impact ratio of 4%, um, I would have to have more soap in the bottle than the bottle can hold. Right, so I would have to run the product, um, you know, too too aggressively. Um, I'd have to have, I forget what it was. I'd have to have like 950 milliliters of soap in a 750 milliliter solution. So I would need it more concentrated than than, than exists. Right, so uh, in order to get a Panama impact ratio of four percent, what I did is I took my foam cannon. Filled that up with water, used one of the pressure washers, changed the foam cannon to a 1.25 millimeter orifice, so that way it'll still foam uh, instead of being too, too open. So one pressure washer at say 1.9 gallons a minute, put it, hold it in the bucket, and it filled up to six gallons. So that means if you do, if you multiply six gallons, I forget what the, well, how many, how many, uh, Let's see, six gallons is about five and a half liters, something like that. Maybe six, six gallons is, let's see, 
one gallon, no, sorry, one gallon is five liters. So it's like roughly 30, yeah, 30, roughly 30 liters, which would be 3,000 milliliters times 0.04. Does that math work? Let's see. 3,000, 3,000 times 0.04. No. What am I doing wrong here? Let me just do the math here for you. Maybe, maybe I got this wrong. I think I, I spent a lot of time on this, so I should have it right. Liters to gallons. Go. So if I had six gallons, six gallons is 22.71 liters, which is 2,271 milliliters. So if I do, and then if you sort of read the back of the bottle here, so it gives you the formula. So you run it, let's see, fill the detergent bottle, blah, 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 take a large bucket or container, discharge the lance into it, watching the detergent bottle till empty. The following calculations will achieve 4% dilution. Measure the total amount collected and multiply by 0.04, not divide, okay. So if I did 22, 71, yeah, that's what I was doing, times 0.04. Did I get this wrong? Add the collected amount, step two, the pressure washer reservoir on top of the cold water. Did I do this wrong? Let's freaking do this. Let's just do it on camera. Why the heck not? Who's gonna stop us? I wanna redo it. Okay, so let me dump this back in here. So generally speaking on a small car like this, I like to do about 750 milliliters of, of, of solution in the bottle. That more than covers the car for me. So let's fill this up. Like this. Fill that up while I'm filling that up. Let's get our pressure washer set up. Let's set this here. I went over to the garage and I picked up and got all of my uh, all of my products. You can see the freaking car X just doesn't stick. Yeah, even with uh, even with 3M. Uh, 3M spray glue on it still doesn't stick. The uh, because these bottles are not fluorinated, the uh, the Tarex comes through the bottle, so I have to clean that up later. Okay, so let me put my gun on here. Always make sure you take your PP plug off first. So if you don't have one of these, I think they're really cool. You probably want one. A little obsessed garage PP plug. Have those in the store. I think we have them in stock too. So take this off. Okay, so let's turn one pressure washer on. So I'm gonna turn the water on. So we got one pressure washer. Oops, got the overflow here, figures. And I've got my bucket. So we got a single bucket. Just gonna dump all the water out. Just throw this in here. I'm gonna take my foam cannon now. Okay, this is the 1.25. I need to go and refresh these things. This doesn't even have the stainless bolt on it. So I need to refresh my foam cannons. So this is the one I use for brake buster. So this is a 1.25 millimeter orifice on it. So I'm gonna fill this up to 750 because that would be the amount of solution that I'm gonna use in the foam cannon. So now we're gonna run this dry. 
and we're going to see how much this bucket we fill up. So we turn the foam cannon all the way up. And you don't have to time this, you just have to run it. I think I was way off. I definitely was way off. I'm glad I'm redoing this. Okay, we got a little bit left, but you get the idea. Wait for this foam to settle. This is like break, leftover brake buster. Brake buster foams really well. So if I ran the rest of that out, it looks like I've got, and again, I'm, I'm rough estimating here, but it looks like I've got about five, five gallons of, uh, of water. And I've ran, run it before. I must have run it with the 1.5 millimeter nozzle before. Yeah, so this is a six gallon bucket. I'm just estimating. So if I really get into this, what I'll do is I'll get really precise for my machine and make sure I dial it in. So I'll get a, a measuring bucket and we'll really get it exact. Uh, I'll probably make some sort of contraption in order to do it and cut a hole in a bucket or something like that. All right, so my, my amount of solution is way off, you know, if I do this correctly. Yeah, see there's a little bit left. So let's call it five, five gallons in order to run out the 750 milliliter solution. So then, if I look at the back of my bottle here, so let me do my, my calculation change. Oh crap, here comes the sun. I'm screwing around too much. I know it's gonna be overcast. So, if we have five gallons, that is five US gallons is 1,892 milliliters. So 1,892, 1,892 milliliters times, and I'm pretty sure it says we did that. Touchless may be applied with the trigger spray, pump spray, pressure washer, snow foam lance, whatever. The minimum recommended dilution should be 2% panel impact ratio and up to 5% for very dirty vehicles. I'm gonna do 4%. Where application is through trigger spray or pump spray, the dilution calculation is easy to achieve. However, for application with the pressure washing equipment, it's essential to determine the amount of water being delivered to the equipment reservoir. So this would be if you had like a detergent thing on the side of the pressure washer, we're using a external foam cannon. Step one, fill the detergent bottle or reservoir up to the capacity with plain water, which we did. Turn detergent feed to full, which we did. Take a large bucket or container and discharge the lance into this, watching the detergent bottle until empty. Once empty, stop. The following calculations will achieve 4% dilution. Measure the total amount collected and multiply this number by 0.04. Okay, so 1892 times 0.04 for 4% dilution. So that's 75. Oh, shoot, I've been doing this way wrong. 75 milliliters. Add the calculated amount from step two to the pressure washer reservoir and top full cool water and shake for a few moments. Apply touches to the entire panel, uh, by, or touch vehicle panel by panel, soak for one to five minutes, never allow it to dry. It is not necessary to use all diluted touchless in one wash. One, one liter diluted product should last four to five washes, blah, blah, blah. Cool. All right. Well, that makes it much more practical then. I was using 450 milliliters in a 750 milliliter solution. So that means what I can do here, take this, gosh, it's way off. How did I get it so wrong? How did I get, how did I get 450 milliliters? Well, so I'm multiplying by 0. 0.4. Let's see. So I was like 2,700 times 0. 0.4. No. I don't know what the heck I did. Yeah, okay. So only 75 milliliters. We'll see how this foams. So let's see. If that's 250... 
50, 50, 100, 150, 200, 250, yeah. So these are 50 milliliter lines, so I'm right in between. Okay, cool. And then we'll fill this up to 75, or 750 total, and we'll see how this works. Make sure we don't overfill it. Pretty close. There we go. Leave that in there for a minute. And we'll take, we have to set, set up for. So I'm gonna clean the wheels, but I could do this where, you know, when I do this snow foam part, you do the wheels really quickly, but I'm gonna do the full wheels today. At least I was going to. The sun started coming out, so hopefully we can beat the sun. I was taking my sweet old time this morning because it was really overcast. It looked like it was gonna rain, but no, it's not rain. All right, stop screwing around, let's get moving. How am I looking here? 60 frames per second, that's the way to go. All right, let's put our, I still have, I ordered some nozzles because we just don't stock the 7.5, so I need the, uh, the proper nozzles. I don't like these old school ones. Straight. I keep meaning to get a 1.5 today after I do this wash and probably edit, put it up. I need to, uh, I'm going to start making a huge list of all the detailing stuff I need here for the house or want. Yeah, now the new thing, <laughs> I see the new thing people are giving me a hard time about, uh, not a lot of people, but a few people, about is um, not using, so I made, the, I made the detailing tour, the video of all the stuff I have in Helen, and uh, <laughs> clearly he was new, new to the channel, he was like, you know, everybody likes to make fun of me for not using, uh, not using all my tools. Or, never, or some people never ever using tools, according to them. Uh, but this guy was um, said something to the effect of, uh, what's the point of having all those tools? You, you don't even use them, like all the detailing stuff. So and one thing you can't accuse me of not using is detailing stuff. I like to keep my arsenal of detailing stuff down to exactly what I'm using. With the exception, so like I get more stuff than you can possibly imagine, just getting all kinds of crap um, that people send to me all the time. And so one of the hard things is to let it go, you know, and not like hold on and hoard a bunch of stuff. So as soon as, as soon as I know I'm not using something, I go put it on the counter in the yarn building and let the guys have it. Because I like to keep just what I'm using in my cabinets. Crap, it was freaking perfect for washing. And the sun, now it's gonna be, dang it. I was taking my time because I thought I had all morning. All right, let's rinse this off. Super easy wheels to clean. Should have done this before. I... These are coated with Deluxe and Gliss. All right, so let's try this uh, this Vonix Vonix Del Delet. Uh, all this stuff is in Portuguese. So I don't want to strip my tires. So let's see how this goes. This would be a dedicated. Again, the PNS Brake Buster, one of the nice things about it is it's not a super aggressive rubber cleaner. That's one of the reasons why I like it. So 
So I don't want to strip off all the hard work I did of kind of building up a nice layer of, uh, of tire dressing. So we'll, we'll see how this goes. But um, uh, Tiago said this stuff is pretty amazing. Like it sure is working. So I don't know that I want to rip my tires all the way down, but let's see how it does. It's a nice lubrication, so it's pretty slick. I need to go get the new brush. There's another one, another thing I need. And then I'm testing out Adam Mac, which is a uh, anti-corrosion product. So we'll keep keep that on the rotors. Let's see the next tire, wheel and tire. Beautiful day out here. So you, uh, you guys better get used to it, wash and clean cars. The car isn't clean, but it's not super dirty. But I'm gonna, I wanna be, stay ahead of the game here in life. Keep this, uh, keep this train on the, uh, on the detail side of life. Why is that not, I guess it doesn't fit, shoot. They're not fitting behind the caliper at all. So I bought a. I talked to my friends at uh, Porsche Wilmington and told them, why is this thing? Not stay. I talked to them about uh, getting a either a GT4 or a Spider, a Boxster GTS. I would take or a um, or a Cayman GTS. All of which I think would be the perfect car in PDK. That's why my GT my GT4 was not a good option for Helen. Um, but I think I need a PDK car for there. So I got the call and I got an allocation, not, not for my preferred option, but for a Cayman GTS, which I do like, it keeps the cost down. Now, you know, I've loaded the thing up and I'm gonna modify it quite a bit, but uh, the, um, maybe not quite a bit, but a little bit. So I ordered white. Black wheels. See, I do love the fact that you know, Brake Buster foams really well, super slick, um, so it has lots of lubrication, which I like a lot. It has um, the ability to clean my tires as well, and it has rust inhibitors in it too. So it's like, I think, the perfect wheel cleaner for wheels like mine that are coated and taken care of. But the, uh, the Cayman GTS has Burmester. They don't offer carbon ceramics on it. I don't know if they did and they, they did away with it. So I had to do the regular red brakes and then um, red brakes, steel brakes. And then I'm gonna get surface transform. Which don't look as pretty as the Porsche uh, cow, uh, rotors do, but they're not they're not a whole heck of a lot. I think for pads and pads and uh, rotors is like seven grand or so, so not all that much different than what it would cost to buy the brakes from Porsche. That's why the carbon ceramic option from Porsche is such a good deal. Sport buckets, carbon ceramics, Burmester, 
are the three best deals from Porsche because you get a really great product for not a lot of money in comparison to what it would probably cost them or what it could cost to buy and retrofit in the aftermarket. Dang it, man. All I had to do was speed it up a little bit. So white, I like the base white, not the Carrera white, metallic. So free paint color, free. Um, black wheels, steel brakes, um, regular PASM. You know, they offer like a uh, grandpa PASM option to like soften the car up a bit, which we don't want. We want to stiffen the car up. So we have uh, um, black GTS interior with sport buckets and Burmester. I'm telling you, all these people, they cheap out. It's the best deal ever. It's 4,500 bucks for a pretty amazing stereo. One of the best factory stereos available, I think. It's a really simple stereo, but... It's not a lot of money for what you get. Shoot, all that work to get all that panel impact ratio figured out, and I probably even shouldn't, shouldn't even use it. Because now I'm in the sun. So that car will be at Helen. I'll figure out some sort of structure. I feel really good about it. You know, that car will be there for a little while until I, you know, sort of recover the initial cost of Helen. I will uh, then, you know, probably do like giveaway on that car or something like that, or you know, sell it depending on what it's worth, depending on how many miles and the wear and tear on it. Uh, but people that go there will be able to borrow that car for money and go rip around. I'll have over axle pipes. I'll have um, I'll probably do some signature wheels, but I got to figure out how to lower the thing. So if I get some springs, because I don't think it has factory adjustable coilovers because if you put wheels on it it just is not going to look very good unless you lower the thing a little bit i don't want it to be too low but you know the cayman doesn't have a particularly low front bumper anyway so it's a really easy car to uh to deal with in that fashion Yeah, I think I need to use this on the uh, Raptor tires, ones that are not dirty, but it doesn't appear to be totally ripping off my, uh, my tire dressing, which I don't want it to, but I do want it to surface clean really well. I forgot to hit the other side with Atomac, so let me do that real quickly. I want to test out the idea of using Atomac, which is a corrosion inhibitor, while right after washing even though the wheels and tires are going to get hit with water again as I'm cleaning the car and we'll kind of see how it does from a rusting perspective like do I have to do it right before I blow dry or can I do it now we'll see problem with four gallons a minute. Freaking blast me in the eyeballs. I'm gonna go get this car aligned hopefully this week. So are the suspensions good to go? I, I don't I think I'm gonna leave it the height. The rear is a little lower than it probably should be. 
And maybe before we do that, I may bring it up in half an inch or so in the rear. It just feels so good, man, the car. Uh-oh, that's not good. Look at that. One loose. I better go check the check all these. Shit, I forgot to hit this one with Adam Mac as well. I'm running out of time here. The sun is gonna really beat down on us, so let's just do this. Sponge. There we go. Nice and clean. I'm check all my torch tracks. So we gotta move quickly because the sun. So theoretically, I forgot to hit Adam Mac on both of those. See, I'm so ingrained in my own darn procedure that changing anything up messes me up. So you don't wanna rinse the car off. You wanna go straight product. So that way you're not diluting it any further. foaming at all. Do I have the wrong? No, this is the 1.25. But these are the growing pains. This is what you got to do to figure this stuff out. Not even a little bit of foam. Now, I don't think foam is really necessary. So, I mean, it might be doing the job even this at, at, at this. I mean, theoretically, I should have the right dilution now. Okay, we used it all up. While that's sitting, I'm gonna mix up some GSF. Just like normal, 150 milliliters of GSF. So the concept here is that I wanna wash off as much dirt as I can. That's the point of this extra step. Which I'm still uncertain that I wanna do. Or need to do.
But somebody brought up a good point. Why not just do it when the car's really dirty? You know, not a bad uh, methodology there. So only do it, only use the, uh, the snow foam, only use the pre-wash when you need to. Clearly right now, I got some bugs on the front, some dust on the car, a little bit of pollen. Clearly, I don't need some heavy duty stuff, but all in the name of testing out products. I mean, the other thing with this kind of stuff, you kind of have to take it on some faith. You know, John from Forensic Detailing did some, did some panel testing that showed, you know, how it worked better. By doing it on a dry car rather than pre-rinsing. But I don't know how conclusive that is. It was. And now we're at GSS for our regular walk. Which remember, I've said this a million times, but you're better off having soap on the car in the sun than not, than just regular water. Because the soap won't water spot because the soap is neutralizing any mineral content in the water. But we have a flaw in my chain here in that now would be the time to be doing deionized water, but I can't because this flows too much. So this is, you know, too much, too much flow at 4.18 gallons per minute to be able to, uh, use the CR spotless. So I'm gonna fill up my bucket and let's get moving. I love GSF, man. It's so good. Super slick, foams really well. Everything's just good about it. I like washing this car too. Yeah, so the uh, concept here is to start wash and drive. We're gonna start wash and drive probably next week and do it every week, so every Tuesday we're gonna do the series where I wash a car, all different types of cars, driving around the block, and we do a regular series of that. I do a regular series of wash and talk. Always messing with different products, different washing products, continuing to refine the process. We find new stuff, we find new stuff, we don't, we don't. And uh, I want to do that regularly. Notice when I, if I ever stretch my pad, meaning if I wash a little bit bigger area than I probably should, um, I always do the windows. Because you're not going to scratch the windows. So like there I did, I already flipped the pad. And then I went and did these windows just as an extra extra little section man csl xo is so good this has xo v5 i think i did xo v5 on this one the prototype and i don't have a, a launch date for you i don't know when they're coming out with it So part of wash and drive, we're gonna to try to make that really, really big, really significant. Um, I'm gonna work on building the reach and size of the YouTube channel and uh, 
you know, try to earn that. Not try, but do. Earn that. And then um, I'm gonna build the wash bay, which I'll, I'll, I'll handhold the camera and show you what the wash bay is gonna look like. It's gonna be a 40 by 40 foot pole barn. <laughs> it's gonna be, we just staked it out yesterday, Mike and I did, um, or what, it, what it's gonna be so I can start to envision where things are gonna go. We're gonna get started on that pretty, pretty quickly here and build that so we have, you know, I'm the car washing guy. I need to not be worrying about the sun business. At least that's my justification here. I really want to have a dedicated wash bay. We could build an enclosed, but I think the progression of things, I want to build a really awesome outdoor one here. It'll cost a lot less than trying to build another garage. It'll be a place to park the Raptor and the Rivian, the Rivian truck when that comes next month, theoretically. But yeah, the wash bay is gonna do, gonna do a slot drain. Upstairs is gonna be where the pressure washing stuff is, all the mechanicals. I, uh, we'll do vacuum system, theoretically mosmatic drying system, if I can get it to work the way I want it. Um, you'll see, it's gonna be freaking sweet. I'll share it with you first here in a, in a minute. For those of you that are inside the Hex members, just bear with us. The app, is, is something wrong with it. Or some people just aren't able to get in. I'm, I'm able to get in. Some, like, I think a, dec a decent percentage of you have been able to get in, which is unacceptable. So we're making the transition to a new app. Which will have you know, notifications and stuff, like just simple things like, hey, there's a new video and it notifies you. So that's coming. But yeah, the freaking wash bay, man, it's gonna be sick. Since I'm gonna stay at this house for a while, at least I say that, who knows, we'll see. But since I'm planning to stay here for a while, if I build the, the pole barn thingy, it'll make this place really cool. All right, we're clean. Let's rinse it, get it inside. It's nothing better than rinsing with four gallons a minute.
So a lot of people ask me about door jams, so I wipe the door jams down with the uh, with the, 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 the mitt, the pad. And then all I do to rinse them is just this, right here, right there. And that gets 90% of the soap out. We'll wipe the rest out when we're drying. I think we're okay to dry it here, outside. You wanna clean off my buckets. Occasionally I like to clean them up nicely. Here comes the overcast, come on. So this here. There's a uh, gun show down the street. I'm gonna, Ryan and I are gonna run down there maybe tomorrow. I need to get a uh, handgun for hiking. I would like to have something at Destination OG. I tried to buy one in Georgia, but um, you can't. Because my house is owned in an LLC. Because my house is not owned in my personal name, I couldn't, they wouldn't sell me one, so I have to, uh, I have to get one here and take it with me. Jeez, that's too much. My buckets have uh, little holes in them, or the bucket dollies, I should say. So the water will run out through it. I only do this every once in a while. So I don't really have to do this very often. And keep these things, the bucket stays loose. Like just, just so it contacts the bucket. There's no reason to torque it down. So just keep it loose and your buckets will last for freaking ever. Some people torque these things down too much and you split your bucket in half. They call me complaining and they freaking did it wrong. I can't believe you're selling a bucket that splits. Well, if you if you cut it in a hole in it with a razor blade, you know, I don't know what to tell you. If you do it wrong, it's not my fault. Buy another one, 20 bucks. <clears throat> oh man, that's not good customer service. Well, I don't have good customer service then. I'll, I'll take that. All right, let's dry this sucker off. Let me just hit it a little bit more. Ready to dry. Let's see how we're looking here on the camera. 60 frames is pretty awesome. It's pretty sweet. Okay, so drying aid, drying towel. Put this thing back in here, get it out of my view. Put that luggage up in the uh, attic. We just got back from Helen. Michelle and Ryan and Kate came to Helen as well, which was super fun. We love it there, man. I was afraid I was gonna hate that town, but we really like it. I need to refill it after this cleaning here. Yeah, so the whole customer service thing is always dicey. You know, I, I've tried to train all of you that, you know, we're in this together and not, um, like this isn't like a uh, IOU, you owe me sort of thing. It's like we're in this together, making some cool stuff. 
and uh, most of the stuff is great. Sometimes, sometimes it doesn't work out as nice as we'd like, and you know we'll take care of it. But you know, people are so used to being entitled to some like no questions asked thing. I had a guy the other day. <laughs> this is why I should never respond. But you know, I like to try to stay ahead of things. And so, you know, someone that got on Instagram was saying, hey, you know, where's the, where's the, um, where's the stubby? I said, look, man, I don't, I don't know. Um, we're working on it. David's working on it, trying to perfect it. And so it got real, like, it was real entitled. Maybe he didn't, maybe I was reading into the words. You know, it's hard when there's no inflection on, you know, on messages. But he was messaging me directly. And, uh. I said, yeah, man, I don't, I don't know. I mean, what would you like me to do? <laughs> he didn't like that at all. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> you know, what would you have me do? You know, well, tell me what you want. Well, was, so he's like, well, I just want my thing. I said, well, I do too. Um, why don't we just cancel it? Well, I don't want to cancel it. I want it. Okay, well, I want you to have it. I want, I don't have one at HQ. I'd like to have one as well. Um, so what do you want me to do? He's like, well, I've been waiting all this time and I don't have any updates. I said, well, I don't either. So when we have an update, we send it out weekly. I don't think anybody else does that. Well, that's not good enough. That's not good customer service. I was like, well, <laughs> you, want to, you want me to lie to you? I said, so you want me to lie to you? I'll just lie to you about it and say it's coming, but it's not. And, and I don't know if it is. So is that what you'd rather have me do? Well, no, I just want it. I said, so what would you like? I said, how about a $500 gift card? You know what? Better yet, 1000 How about a $1,000 gift card? Would that make you happy? And he's like, he's just, he's just signed off at that point. <laughs> so, I just can't imagine. Like, imagine I bought like Jay Leno detail spray or something like that. Now, I understand I'm more approachable. I'm certainly not Jay Leno, um, but this would be equivalent to me. You know, I'm, I've, I've started messaging Jay Leno. Hey, Jay Leno, I ordered this uh, soap. Why is it not here? And I just couldn't imagine having that kind of sense of entitlement. As soon as somebody says, I don't know, I'm like, oh, shoot. Okay, cool, man. You know, I, I really don't want to wait anymore. Can I have my money back? That's what customer service is. Yeah, sure, no problem. Bad customer service is like, no, screw you, I'm keeping your money. And people have a weird sense of what, what they're owed. Like, what do, you, what do you want? You just want me to kiss your rear end? I'm not doing that, that's stupid. That has nothing to do with service. That's just me being subordinate to you, which makes no sense. Like, why does anybody need to be subordinate to anybody? So, yeah, that, that's why I should never answer questions. But I just can't imagine, like, if I'm talking to Adam from Adam's Polishes, and, like, I just, I just wouldn't be, be that way. So, whatever. Anyway, I won't be uh, responding to direct messages about customer service questions. We'll let the nice people, let Manny and Daniel and Ian and the nice people and Nathan talk to, the, talk to people about it because they're... They're not allowed to be mean, so <laughs> it probably is a smarter business decision. But why not just cancel it? I want a better update than what you have. Well, I don't freaking have one, so what, what do you want me to do? I want you to give me a better update. Well, I don't have an update. <laughs> it's like you get in this endless loop of nothingness. What, what do you want from me? Well, this is just bad. Well, I thought it was going to be available six months ago, but it's not. We're dealing in the world of things that don't exist. And unfortunately, sometimes it doesn't work out the way I'd hoped. So let's do this. I'll give your money back, and then when they come in stock, you can buy one. That seems pretty reasonable to me. That is not acceptable. Okay, well, sorry for your luck then. I'm not the right guy for you.
Man, this car looks good. So yeah, wash bay. So the wash bay will be 40 by 40. So the main washing section um, will be um, 28 feet deep by, oh no, actually it'll be 32 feet deep by roughly 25 feet wide. We're gonna do a slot drain down the middle of that. Um, it'll be, it'll be, um, I'll, have to, I'll just have to show you, I'll show you. I should probably show you right now. I just want to get this thing dry first. We'll, we'll uh, I'll show you before it. It looks like it's gonna rain. So we'll do that here in a second. But we're gonna sub out the things we need to sub out and then Mike and I are gonna do it ourselves. But it's gonna match the house. So it'll be stucco, white, you know, this uh, alabaster white is the color of the exterior of the house. And uh, iron ore, I believe, is the black, like the black, the dark charcoal looking accent color. So we'll, we'll make it look like the house. So it doesn't look super out of place. Or like overly in your face. Because it's going to be really big. But it's gonna kinda make this place, I think, make it more, feel more, I don't know. I don't know what it's gonna do. It's gonna make me feel better. Have an awesome washing area. And then you, we get the park in it as well, so the Raptor doesn't have to sit outside. We'll get, a, we'll get the, uh, the Gen 3 Raptor. I'll wash it more often, theoretically. I did listen to uh, some of you guys, Spencer messaged me to uh, restore the coating. So the coating is certainly still there. And I thought it was on there for two years. It's only been on there for 10 months. It just hasn't been taken care of. So it's contaminated. And so I bought W9, I think it's W9, which is the uh, water spot remover, which is a scale remover. So that'll hopefully kind of restore the hydrophobics of the coating or to unclog it, if you will. So we'll do that on the next wash. Whenever I can nail Michelle down again, cause she's always running around all over the place. She's in Orlando right now with Kate at a volleyball tournament. I'm telling you, that's the method. Don't, uh, don't wash the thing and it doesn't get scratched up. Oh, the other thing I was thinking about, another side benefit to doing a surface wash or a pre-wash, like what we did, would be contamination. So the two benefits would be hopefully less marring, scratching of the surface because you're hopefully removing a good percentage of the dirt and debris from the surface prior to ever contacting the car. Because we know that a pH neutral soap is more lubrication than anything. It's not really, I mean, there's some detergent factors in like GSF, but in general, it's not doing a whole heck of a lot of cleaning. It's mainly for lubrication. So to use the detergent, using the surfactant and detergents that are in a pre-wash, you know, part of my rub against it is that it would affect, you know, it would affect the longevity of your coating. So I do think we probably end up in the same spot because yeah, we're going to improve the, the scratching, right? So the marring and, and, uh, and imperfecting of the coating. We're also going to improve the amount of contamination that builds up. So we extend the life of it a bit. But I would guess that because of the, the stuff in, now it's not gonna remove a coating in one wash, but it, I think it would very likely degrade the coating a bit over time. 
So, you know, I would argue, where's that screw? I would, uh, or I'd not argue, but at least pose the possibility that we may end up in the same spot and that yes, we have less contamination, yes, we have a less marred surface, but we're still gonna end up needing to polish it in a year and a half or two years anyway, because the coating is going to be degraded. It's gonna take several years for it to, to break it down, but it's going to break down some of the surface layer of the coating. But, you know, I think you could, you, you make the trade-off choice here in that, well, shoot, I'd rather have a less scratched surface and have, you know, have my coating degraded and also have a smoother surface with less contamination build up than to have my coating last a little longer. So, but again, I, I, think, I think we likely end up in the same spot, roughly. But who knows? I don't really measure that anyway, so I'm not really sure. So, I may cheat it a little bit in the dedicated wash bay because I'm thinking, I may have a dedicated foaming lance. And so what I would do is set up a dedicated touchless, you know, pre-diluted bucket of stuff that I can just grab the other foaming lance that I would set up on a dedicated pressure washer. This is where, you know, this is where it gets a bit ridiculous. And then that would uh, that would take care of my um, make it speedier to do a quick pre-rinse if you know what I mean. That's part of the concept of the uh, wash and drive is the, I'm gonna build some branding around the concept of, you know, your car always drives better when it's clean. And so I'm gonna have people bring cars from all over. It's going to be me in the video, not them. You know, I've sort of learned that from the, uh, the smoking tires one takes you know, whenever they have a guy in the passenger seat, it's always freaking awkward and weird. It's way better when, you know, Matt Farah is in the driver's seat in the car by himself, experiencing, you know, what the car is doing rather than having to make conversation with the, uh, with the passenger. And so what we'll probably do is when you come, you'll come here, we'll, you know, drop the car. And then um, I think a lot of people would come overnight Maybe I'd grab their hotel room or something like that. So they've come the night before, and then spray a little drying aid on the subwoofer, and then um, come drop the car off to me in the morning. They go take a tour of OGHQ while I'm here doing the wash and drive, and then they come pick up their car and head home or whatever, you know, do something like that. We'll, we'll try some different things. See what works. And then the goal was to make it eventually really well produced. Who knows, maybe we find that less production is better, but where are we? have cars that we ship in and have the car here for a week so we can get all the roller shots and stuff. I don't know, There's, there could be some really cool things that we could get into with it. But part of the reason I haven't done it yet is we've been held up in that I keep thinking, well, we keep wanting to do it two 
overly produced right from the get-go. And so we were like waiting for the time, the timing to be right to do that. And when that's never gonna happen. So we need to just freaking do it. Just ship it. Just start doing it and build it. But I plan to have an apparel line. We'll probably eventually get some sponsors. I think I could get sponsorship and not have it be, um, you know, sold out, if you will. I don't have to sell out to do it. I need to get a car cover for this thing. But pollen season's over, so it won't be too bad. Next week we'll wash the 997 again, I think. That's pretty good. Let's hit this here. Use one leaf to get the other leaf. So today I'm gonna to be working on my cabinets here, making a list of the detailing stuff I need to grab from HQ. Get a full detailing setup. I need to make a list of all the Milwaukee tools that I'd like to have here. And grab those. It's kind of cool going and shopping on my own shelves. You know, it took me a long time to get to this point, but I had a really hard time. Even though I buy everything wholesale, like I never wanted to take anything. Like every time I took something off my own shelves to use for myself for videos or for whatever, it always felt like I'm stealing from myself. You know, it's like stealing profitability or something even though so i would feel better buying on amazon than i would grabbing it from my own store <laughs> so i need to uh i finally started to that that has waned i don't have that same feeling anymore about that it's kind of a weird thing but <clears throat> There's just a, an E36 smell. The car just has a really cool, like, proper 90s BMW smell. Like the exhaust scent is like very E36 specific. Okay, let's do the... Uh Let's go out before it rains. Let's go take a look at the uh, the wash bay. I'll show you guys the wash bay first. Dry this off. This is the original prototype tool tool tray. I need to get the real one, the current one. Okay, so you see the uh, the lines. So here's one part. I'm trying not to shaky cam this on you and to keep it stabilized. And so then you see the other line out there. So it's 40 feet wide. And then this section here on the left, so to give you a frame of reference, here's the, uh, here's the, the pool deck. So I want it to be kind of corridor-like, where this little corridor you kind of walk into where it feels a little bit more, I don't know, completed. I need to figure out something with the garbage cans. So I have to figure out some sort of storage area in here that I don't wanna, I don't wanna sacrifice a square inch of it, but I need to build some sort of little closet or some little stow area for the garbage cans. Uh, and so this wall here, so this, this section will be um, open, right? So it'll be a pole barn like open. This whole front will be open. There will be a beam right about here to kind of delineate. Uh, and so you can see how we have it staked out here. So this back corner is where I'm going to do a sauna and a cold plunge. And then I'll have a little little workout pad here because I'm going to start uh, knees over toes. <laughs> and so um, 
I'm going to have like a little setup where I'll probably keep a barbell just so I could, I don't know, do some stuff out here if I wanted to. I don't know, go to the gym. I prefer to work out at the gym, not here. But as I, I haven't talked about uh, what my fitness plans are because I need to stop talking about it because I haven't done any of the things I've been playing in all these years. So this wall here, there'll be a doorway like right here, just an open doorway. Uh, the Rivian charger will go here. This is where the cars will, you know, at least one car will park here. And I say one and a half cars will park right here. And then, um, and then this bump out here. So this wall, this wall will be, um, will be uh, wood, wood, wood. Uh, and so then that way we can run plumbing and stuff in the wall easier. Uh, and so this section here will bump in. This is about five and a half feet and then comes all the way over. We just ran out of string, but it'll come all the way over to the edge. And then that will be a block little, little wall from here to here. Uh, and so think of this as like a little U shape, uh, which will sort of delineate and make it feel like the wash bay. So the, the, uh, the slot drain will run right down the middle. So this is about 32 feet from driveway to this section here. We're gonna do nature cast cabinets because I won't have any real tools out here. It'll all be um, uh, washing stuff. So a small little cabinet array. We'll have some shelves on the wall, but this will be open, weatherproofed. It won't be enclosed. Somebody comes in, so I'm gonna have cameras and stuff on it so no one's gonna come mess with it. So back here, cold plunge goes right here. Sauna goes here. Um, I forget the, uh, the sauna that I'm planning to get. And then right here will become the bathroom. See, there's no bathroom that's dedicated for the pool. Um, so I'm gonna have to run water and septic out to this thing. Uh, and so we're gonna make this the pool bath. Uh, and so the pool bath is gonna go right here. So there'll be a, a wall here. And then it'll be, it'll be a seven and a half by roughly 10 feet. And there'll be a shower right here, you know, toilet and then sink and whatever. I'll have to, I'll have to lay that out. And then whatever's left back here will be storage. So just a just an open storage area for whatever. On this section, so down the middle of this, we're gonna do an attic style truss. So right down the middle, so think of uh, up top here, we'll have, um, we'll have some uh, magic stairs. Uh, and so upstairs, we're gonna do like a tiled room where that's where all of the, uh, all the equipment goes, pressure washer and all that. Uh, so that's the plan for the, uh, the, the, the pressure washing thing. 11 foot ceilings. And um, again, it's gonna look like the house. So the columns, wherever the columns are, will be uh, block columns. Uh, we'll have um, probably I-beams that are then soffited like the house. We'll have the same shingles. We'll have the same, um, same color same gutters, all that same stuff that we have on the house, we'll have there. And then we're gonna have some sidewalks, sidewalk that kind of comes off here, comes off here, connects to the existing sidewalk. Uh, and then we're gonna take a sidewalk from, cause we're gonna pour the slab four feet out the back here. So we have a sidewalk off the back. So actually that's probably where I'll put the garbage cans. Uh, and then the sidewalk will go all the way out to the shed out back here that we've kind of tucked in the woods. We'll leave the trampoline alone. You know, the volleyball net is sometimes up. So it still leaves us a pretty decent sized backyard. We have a really big front yard. And just turn this into a little compound. It's gonna be freaking sweet. The garage is plenty big enough for me. So adding this section, adding this setup makes a lot of sense. And then <laughs> 40 by 40 is pretty substantial. We only have to take out maybe one tree and then we'll figure out the septic systems over there. We'll figure out and water comes from over there so we'll probably have to dig a trench and do uh, plumbing electrical all that kind of thing as well so that's the plan so i've been working on organizing some cabinet stuff so i've got a bunch of stuff on my counters which isn't normal I've got my gopros there we were driving in the stakes for the uh for the pole barn i'm working on my speakers putting the uh the kit together for the hole saws. I brought a bunch of detailing stuff over here as I start to make my list of things I'm missing. So don't judge me, I'll, uh, I'll get that cleaned up here today. That was my plan this weekend, to piddle around and start making lists of the things I'm missing. Uh, I, I didn't realize I had the camera on me, but I was just cleaning the bottom of the stool. Part of some of the things I feel like I've been missing the last few years has been the ability to just like 
just keep things organized and cleaned and really dig into the you know, organizational structure of everything that I like to do. So I've been uh, you know, sort of neglected a lot of things over the last few years that I normally didn't neglect. So I've been uh, really enjoying this old school wash and talk, old school, you know, ability to just kind of, kind of do what I love, you know, and, and keep keeping things dialed in. That's the, that's the word I'm looking for, dialed in. It's like a word I've lost because I've been dialing everything in, getting it up to standard or working on these huge projects. Oh, we got to check the uh, lugs. Bryce swears that I need to try this Q2M Tire Express which is the uh, Gion, Gion tire dressing. Oh, it smells really good. It smells like pineapples. This is uh, part of what I want to be able to do is just try stuff out. I'm not loving the application. Seems like I'm probably using a little too much here. Oh, it's not pineapples, it's coconuts. That's what it smells like. So I think I'll have to come back. I bought the excess in a minute. Yeah, this may not be the best applicator for this product. You should read the instructions. Clean the tire, rinse well. Sure, even application. Let dry for 15 minutes. Simple enough. So this is what I'm, so I'm using. Q2M Tire Express. Easy daily tire dressing. So what I'm going to do, finish the tires here, I'm going to go upload or drop this footage in my computer, edit this really fast, get it uploading, and come out here and start tinkering around the garage. Uh, we're going to do the, uh, Ryan and I are going to do our knees over toes and maybe go for a ruck, then I'll start tinkering around the garage. Okay. Oh, the other thing I wanted to do real quickly was do a quick little vacuum inside. Our vacuum is about ready to launch, so be prepared. So we've got the accessories to where they're functional. You know, found the best accessories that you know, kind of exist today. And then, and then it's on to chasing, maybe manufacturing them, seeing if we can find some here and there. As we're developing our platform. But so we're gonna open up a pre-order soon. I've got some more, a little bit more testing to do and that we have two, um, we have two different versions like a supercharged version and a regular version. I don't know about this dressing. It seems kind of goopy, but it does seem to be applying more evenly than OG tire dressing. So this is my promise is that, you know, I have my own tire dressing, but I don't want to have my own tire dressing. I just had to have it because it was the best I found. And so if I find something I like more, we'll punt mine and go get the stuff I like more. That's the, that's the whole point. A little bonus footage here. Let's uh, wind up a pressure washer.
What am I doing? Water's off here. Turn off my machines. Water out. Holster. PP plug. Just pull this in here like this. The other thing, I gotta get the OG hose, put it in here. This is my original, original Cobra Jet hose. You can see, still hanging tough. Looks good. This thing will last a long, long time, as long as you don't drive over it. Should last darn near forever. These are uh, T316 stainless shelves, so they shouldn't develop a ring like the 304 shelves might, but they cost a frickin' fortune. So they're certainly not for everybody. If you haven't seen this yet, gosh, I love this. This uh, this thing here. So freaking cool. I don't need all 50 feet, but since we got it out, And then, right here, we've got all this stuff ready to roll. So, let's put this on. I probably need this. And this. So remember my, my unit, the uh, vacuum is up in the attic. I love this because I don't have to get anything out. It takes two seconds and I can just do a real quick superficial wipe down. And this is most of the time, this is all my cars need. It's just a quick little, little dusting, de-dusting. all I needed. And since I have 50 feet of hose, I can just run to the other side real quickly. So I'm going to have this all kind of gridded out with all my tools, whatever tools I'm either testing or using. And I can quickly... Uh... Thanks to Nick Jones for that suggestion back in the day. Awesome, this stuff is good. Just wipe this off, put this back on the shelf. Actually, I'm gonna keep this in here. I'm gonna make a note to myself to get the proper orifice nozzles. I'm gonna keep this in here as well. 
I may have gone a little aggressive with the height of my upper cabinets. Uh, last thing I wanted to do, I want to try this real quickly. This is from Vonix as well. Vonix is a Brazilian um, chemical manufacturer that has a really significant product line in Brazil. And so I wanted to just kind of try this interior cleaner just real superficially here. All right, so that's a wrap on uh, today's wash and talk. I'll, uh, I'll see you probably next week, another wash and talk on something else. You gotta do some driving, get some cars dirty. That's the hope. Uh, quick little cleanup of the E36. Makes, makes washing so much more fun when the car is dialed in, the interior is relatively clean. Just a real superficial cleaning, superficial wipe down. Occasionally pick something like, you know, clean the windows or something like that. Uh, but this is the life I wanna live. I wanna have a wash bay, have this amazing garage. Um, with my cabinets and TV and speakers and so kind of putting this all together and then kind of getting back to the roots of me developing, de developing it on camera for myself and then you know then hopefully selling it to you to stay in business you know to stay in existence so anyway thanks for watching and as always stay tuned for more crazy lots of cool stuff coming we'll see you soon